In September 2018, I rescued two ponies from the Dawson Creek auction where they would otherwise be going to kill buyers and sold for meat. This is the story of the bay filly that I rescued from Dawson Creek auction and her transformation while in training with me. Oh, she's so Hi good. guys! Hi. Good girl! Good girl! Go Pon Pon! Oh! oh my god, they're so cute! This filly almost ended up shipping for meat despite the fact that I had people bidding on her on my behalf. Due to a miscommunication, they stopped bidding and the kill buyer ended up purchasing her. But luckily, he was nice enough to sell her back at cost and allowed her to go to a good home where she would be cared for instead of heading to the kill pen. Because of her close brush with death, I decided to call her Roulette as per a suggestion from my Instagram page. When she arrived, Roulette showed herself to be extremely at ease with people and super friendly and kind. I contacted her previous owners who had sent her to the auction and they told me she was only halter broke and that she was about two and a half as per her auction papers. She stood about 14-1 when I first got her. Neither myself or her previous owners had an exact idea on her breed. All we knew for sure is that she was a quarter horse cross. After finishing her quarantine period, I decided to send her out to pasture for the winter because she was so young and deserved to go out and play with other horses and grow up a bit before I started her in training as a riding horse. Because she was so easygoing and comfortable with people and had all of the basics of groundwork and ground manners, it was no issue to have her turned out for the winter with minimal handling. I still went to visit her frequently and brush her and work on basic ground manners, but mostly she just got to enjoy being a horse. After being out on pasture for about three weeks, Roulette sustained what at first appeared to be a minor surface wound on the inside of her hawk from walking through the blackberry brambles. I treated it as a normal wound, cleaning and putting cream on it. After a couple days, her hawk suddenly doubled in size and she was in so much pain that she could not even walk across the field to be with her friends or drink water. I immediately called the vet and they recommended that she go into the clinic to be treated for a joint infection. Joint infections are very serious as they can develop quickly and do fatal damage to the joint. We were extremely concerned. The vets took an aggressive approach, flushing the joint and injecting antibiotics straight into the joint capsule. And luckily, the infection started to wane. The vet's best guess is that this was caused by a blackberry thorn just nicking the tendon sheath and allowing bacteria to get in and cause an infection. After a few days at the vet clinic, Roulette was able to come home to continue her healing. Because hawk infections weakened the joint, she needed extra time off even after she came sound to ensure that her hawk was strong enough for work. After the recommended healing period, I started doing lunging work with her to get her fit again and prepare her to start learning how to become a riding horse. Roulette finished off the rest of the winter, turned out with the mares in the mares field after she finished her paddock rest, and then I started saddling her and getting her used to all sorts of different things that a riding horse would need to handle. After a couple months of lunging and working on groundwork, such as teaching her to move off of leg pressure and rein pressure from the ground, I decided to get on her for the first time in her three-year-old year as the worst of winter started to go away. For her first ride, I just sat on her and had my mom lead me around for about five minutes and then got off, and this was the extent of her ridden work for the next little while. 
Roulette was so easy for all of this stuff that I didn't really feel the need to drill her or do lots of sessions to refresh her throughout the week because she just took everything in such a stride and was so perfect about it all. I would do enough groundwork to keep her semi-fit. The rest of the time, Roulette was just out in the field hanging out with her buddies. I decided to get on her again about a month or two after I sat on her, after doing more groundwork, teaching her to move off of leg pressure, teaching her to turn on the forehand on haunches, and so on and so forth. For her first real ride, Roulette was absolutely phenomenal and once again took everything in a stride. I walked and trotted her around for about 10 minutes and then got off of her and put her back out in the field with her buddies. And from then on, I rode her about once or twice a week on and off. Sometimes she would get several weeks off and sometimes I was more on the ball with riding her exactly once a week. But since she was so young, she was never in a hard work schedule and never really ridden for more than about 15 minutes. Even with lots of time off, Roulette was always exactly the same. She was never spooky, she was never concerned about anything, she was always extremely relaxed and totally at ease with what was going on. It was really refreshing to work with such a quiet and steady horse, especially since the other pony that I rescued from the same auction arrived feral. No matter what we threw at her, Roulette never batted an eye. She acted like an old schoolmaster even though she was so young and hadn't really experienced all that much other than living out in a field and having basic handling. When I'm starting horses for the first several rides, I just do walk and trot. So when Roulette did her first canter, it was just a spur of the moment thing when I was playing with her out in the field. And I asked her for a couple strides of canter and she was absolutely phenomenal. And then she wasn't really asked to do much for a little while other than groundwork. And by her sixth ride, she was riding bridleless. By then, Roulette had proven herself to be a phenomenal young horse that was so unusual in her ability to handle things and pick up new concepts extremely quickly. As spring started to roll around, I decided to start trying to take Roulette off property since she was so unfazed at home. And we took her for her first trail ride and I had a working student riding her. I stupidly forgot Roulette's girth so we could not saddle her. So luckily my working student was game to ride her bareback in the park. Since Roulette was the perfect little angel she was, she was completely at ease and absolutely phenomenal once again. After Roulette had gone trail riding a few times, my brother decided he wanted to go for a trail ride on a weekend off from his treatment center. Naturally, we put him on Roulette, even though she was the greenest horse I had, because she was just so even-tempered and easy to ride. Roulette was a perfect angel for him. When we rode up to one of the viewpoints on the trail, he said, and I quote, Who needs drugs when you can do this? I saved Roulette, but then her kind heart helped to save the people I love. After I'd had Roulette about seven months, I started looking at the idea of selling her because she had progressed so well and so quickly. I knew I could find her a good home where she could stay for a while, since she was so even-tempered and suited for a variety of riding levels. I had rescued these ponies with the intention to train and sell them because of the fact that I do train professionally and I love making a difference in the horse world. So I decided it was time to start looking for Roulette's new home. Roulette's sales ad received an overwhelming amount of interest. Eventually the person who decided to buy her was someone that wanted a safe horse to take out on the trails and that their husband could also ride and that they could do low level showing with. It was the perfect home where Roulette would be able to stay for a long time and live outside naturally with another horse and live the sweet life that she was used to with lots of turnout. Her new owner was extremely excited to have her and really loved her, so I knew that Roulette would be loved and taken care of. 
I'm happy that I had the chance to save Roulette and offer her a new lease on life. And I would encourage all of you to consider adopting horses from a rescue center or adopting the next animal you hope to add to your family. Or if you're experienced, check out the auctions and consider outbidding a kill buyer to rescue a horse from slaughter.